All right. Um, okay, what's the most frequent way most salespeople communicate with a customer? When they're not here, text message. Text? Seems like what most customers want. No, yeah, a lot of a lot of customers want text. Call them, they send you straight to voicemail. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. So let's, let's talk about. I think you just hit the nail on the head. So my freak, most frequent, especially if I make a hundred outbound phone calls, how many times am I going to get voicemail? Probably ninety eight. Well, if not ninety eight, close to. I think the average is about eighty. I mean, personally, I don't answer. I don't. I don't answer it if I don't know who. The, I don't know who. No, I don't know who it is. In fact, my voice message, which I think is pretty cute, my voice message is: You reach Steve's phone. He's not here right now. Leave a message, and if it's interesting, I might call you back. <laughs> so I get some pretty interesting voice messages. <laughs> All right. Um, turn to page six. Go to the middle of the page where it says elements of effective voice messages. I mystery shop about twice a month now. Every time I read about some hotshot store that does has a great BDC or does great with t incoming phone calls, mm -hmm. I mystery shop them because I'm looking for good ideas. I'm looking for people smarter than I am. I'm looking for good, um, if they call me, I'll answer the phone. I'm looking for good telephone rap. I'm looking for things that would make me want to come to a dealership. But most of the time I get, I get voicemail. And most voicemails are rather boring. Okay, it would sound like this. Hey, Maddie, this is Steve. Saw that you called about, um, or you're, you sent, an inter, sent a lead in about such and such vehicle. I just want to let you know that vehicle is available. Please call me so I can uh, help you get more information. It's a boring voice message. So I have taken some great voice messages that I've gotten, and I've put them all in here for you guys to look at, to decide if you like them, modify them, personalize them, make them work for you and your stores, but there are some things that every voice message should contain. All right? Most lack the key components required to get callbacks or any other action. An effective voice message consists of two necessary parts, content and voice tonality. Content, I understand. What's voice tonality? Personality. Right. You don't want to be loud and fast, but you want to be interesting. Okay. Um, you, you you want to get them excited. All right. Excited enough to either call you back or take your next call. All right. A boring voice delivering great content is ineffective. Below is a list of content elements that need to be included in an action-inducing voice message. Make the voice message about the customer, not about what you or your store needs. That means I wouldn't say, well, Chris, if you have a trade, we need to see your vehicle. We can't give you a good number until we see, we see your vehicle. As opposed to, Chris, in order to get you top dollar, um, there's some information that we need to get from you so you can get the most money for your vehicle. Make it about them. Um, call in to give you the information you requested so you can make the best decision for you. Um, when possible, include a professional tease. What would a professional tease sound like? Hey, I've got a really nice vehicle available on the lot, something I really think you'd be interested in. That's Something not, along those lines. Just yeah, it's not a tease. We're offering some great deals for the month of October, so you should give me a call back as soon as you can. I'm that, that, that's more of a tease. That's more of a tease. Or might it sound something like this? Maddie, there's a number of unpublished discounts we have. Um, in order to discover which unpublished discounts you qualify for, we need to talk to you. Please call me back or take my next call. What's an unpublished discount? Rebates when you use something for new cars. Military or it could be anything you make it. Okay? It could it be military? Yeah. I mean, do you guys have military dis? Do you have uh, recent college graduate discounts? Do you have Lincoln loyalty discounts? Okay. Do you have first responder discounts? Okay, those are, those are you know, we say they're unpublished. Most customers don't know about them. All right? If I think there's a discount out there I might qualify for that I haven't heard about, might I be more likely to give you a call back or pick up your next call? 
The answer is yes. All right, you've got to leave a call to action. You know, please call me back, please text me, please email me. If you want to FaceTime me, FaceTime me. No one's ever going to FaceTime you, but they'll remember your call to action because nobody else will say it. Um, my favorite one is the promise of persistence. Most customers know that most salespeople give up. Your average salesperson, when it comes to all salespeople across the country, how many times do they call a customer before they give up? Uh, twice. 1.5. 1. Okay, they don't even call twice. All right, so the promise of persistence might sound like this. So, Valerie, sorry I didn't reach you, but um, I will call you again. I will never, ever, 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 ever stop calling until I get you the information you ask for. Because who asks for the information? Yeah. Them. If the customer doesn't think you're going to give up, are they more likely to pick up your next call or call you back? Yes. If they don't, if, but most they customers know you're going to give up. Say again? They text back a lot. Okay, good. Stop. Uh, <laughs> hey, I <laughs> where it is. I don't give it. Alright, starting on page 7, I've put together 13, I think, voice messages that have worked well for other salespeople getting customers on the phone or getting them to call you back. So I strongly suggest you go through all of those and decide which ones work best for you. And when you call a customer, you need to have two plans. Plan A, if they answer the phone, and plan B, the voice message you're going to leave if they don't. Um, and by the way, you can use these in texts, you can use them in emails as well. All right?